In computer graphics, an expression is some sort of mathematical equation that drives some value. And in 3ds Max, the program module that creates movement or animation is a controller. In 3ds Max, one way to apply an automated movement or rotation or parameter change is through an expression controller. And in this case, we'll use an expression controller to drive the rotation of a ball based upon its position so that the ball will roll across the floor. And thinking ahead, I want to link the ball to a control object so that then I can position and rotate that control object in order to direct the trajectory of the ball. I've got my ball already here at the origin. Let's create a helper object and link the ball to that. I'll turn on 3D snaps, and I'm snapping to the grid points. We can just check that by right-clicking on the magnet, and snaps are set to grid points only. Go over to the Create panel in the Helpers section, and click on Point, and then just click at the origin to create that point helper. Right-click to exit the tool. Let's make it a little bit larger. Go to the Modify panel and just set its size to one meter. Now we'll link the ball to that helper. On the main toolbar, choose Select and Link. Click on the ball and drag over to the helper. And now that link's been made, let's test it. Grab the Move tool, select the point helper and move it around and we can see the ball is following along. We can turn the snaps back off again, and let's rename that point helper. We'll call it Ball Control. And so we can properly get our bearings. Let's set the reference coordinate systems for position and rotation, so we'll know exactly what position channel and what rotation channel we need to deal with. Here's the Move tool. And for the reference coordinate system, choose parent, because that's the true coordinate system of an object's position. The position of an object is calculated relative to its parent. And so right now the ball has a position of zero because it's right on top of that helper object. Likewise, we wanna make sure we're working in the correct rotation reference coordinate system. So choose rotation and set its reference coordinate system to Gimbal. And once again, that is the true reference coordinate system for an object in 3ds Max. All of the other ones here are sort of temporary and kind of fake and really are not to be trusted when you're trying to do things like create an expression. So for position, we have parent, and for rotation, we have Gimbal. All right, I'll go back to position and just move that ball control over and just position it over and we're ready to create that expression. Select the ball, and we can do that from the motion panel or from the curve editor. I prefer to do it from the curve editor. So open up the curve editor, and we see the transforms, position, and rotation. We want to adjust the Y rotation in this case. So select Y rotation, and we'll assign a float expression controller. Right-click on that, Choose a sign controller from the context sensitive quad menu. And in the assign float controller dialog, choose float expression. And by float here is meant a floating point number. So click OK. And the properties for that controller open automatically. This is the expression controller. We need to create some variables and optionally connect them to controllers in the scene. The first thing to do is to create the variable with a name. And before we put its name in and create it, we want to choose whether it's a scalar or a vector. Scalar is a single floating point number, and vector is three floating point numbers, such as an RGB color or a combined X, Y, and Z position. These are going to be scalar variables, just a single number. The first one will be position in X. Type in POS and a capital X and click Create. And now that scalar variable is created. Currently, it's assigned to a constant value of zero. With that scalar variable selected, click Assign to Controller, and in the Track View Pick dialog, 
we want to choose the appropriate parameter here, which is going to be position X for the ball. Down here at the bottom, we see objects. So open up objects. And here we have ball control. And there's a small right facing arrow next to that to open up the transform hierarchy. So click on that. And we see it has a child, which is the ball. Open up the tracks for the ball, then open up the transform tracks, then open up the position transform tracks. And here we want to choose X position and click OK. Now the variable named pause X is assigned to the ball objects X position. We'll now create another variable for the radius of the ball. So here we'll type in radius for the name. And it is also a scalar variable. Click create. And with it selected in the list here, once again, click assign to controller. And once again, under objects, ball control ball, we want to find the radius and that's under modified object. And at the bottom of that is the object primitive, which is in this case, a geosphere, open up geosphere. And here's the radius, select that and click OK. So these are the two variables we need in order to make this expression work. We need to know the position of the ball relative to its parent. And we need to know the radius of the ball in order to cause it to rotate according to the position. So once again, we're determining the Y rotation for the ball using its position in X relative to its parent and its radius. 3ds Max makes it very easy for us to put in this expression. We don't need to worry about degrees. We don't need to worry about radians or any units of measure. All we need to do is plug in a very simple expression over here in this field. Currently, it's got a value of negative zero. So select that and press backspace to delete that. Put in the first variable, which is P O S and uppercase X. And we can put in a slash to divide that value by the radius. 3ds max is very forgiving here in the expression controller. We can put in white spaces if we want, and that won't break the expression. So just for visual clarity, I'll put in a white space and then the forward slash. And then another white space again for visual clarity and then the variable name of radius. And that is all there is to it. I don't need to put in any ending line character like a semicolon or anything like that. It's super easy breezy. So that's done. That's my expression. So I can just click close here and let's take a look at it. I'll close the track view. And with that ball selected, Let's, uh, let's rotate the ball control around just to make it really clear. So I'll select that ball control and rotate it. So it's not orthogonal to the world. And then with the move tool, select the ball. And once again, we're moving it in parent space in the X direction. So the Y rotation of the ball is being driven by the X position of the ball relative to its parent and the radius of the ball. And we can create some animation for this if we want. So with that ball selected, we can go back to frame zero and let's set that ball position to zero as well. So I can right click on the select and move tool and set its X position to zero just to keep things neat and clean and go down to frame 60 in the timeline, enable auto key. And as you may know, with auto key turned on, and no keyframes in the timeline. When we create a keyframe here at a frame other than zero, 3ds Max will automatically create a keyframe at frame zero for us and a keyframe at frame 60. So using the move tool in parent space, I'll move the ball in X and we get a keyframe at 60 and a keyframe at zero. We can turn off auto key, rewind and play that back. And we've got our automated ball roll. And because we thought ahead and linked the ball to a helper object, this point helper, we can now move that point helper around, go over to the top view, maybe move that. We can rotate it and cause the ball to move in a different direction. 
without changing our animation. All right, that's very simple. That's how to use the expression controller to drive an animation track with other parameters in the scene.